everybody. Welcome back to the channel. It's good to have you back. Well, you might know that I've been interested for a long time in merging little notebooks with photographs. And uh, I've done this in different ways. I've made little tiny contact prints and put them in little handmade little micro zines. But I'm looking for a little bit more of a flexible kind of technology involving being able to make color images and being able to put them into like a variety of different kinds of like notebooks or make my own little greeting cards or whatever like that. So. I've been thinking about this for a while, and I have one solution that I'm going to share with you today. Stay tuned. So for this craft project, I could just use a conventional color inkjet printer, run it through my computer, Photoshop some images, and cut them out and paste them into notebooks or whatever. But I'm really kind of looking for a standalone solution that's mobile, that enables me to do this out in the field, perhaps, without being tethered to a computer and a big printer or whatever. And so I'm kind of uh, limited to several options. And one of those options is going to be Instant Film, either Fujifilm Instax, when, with their three different kinds of formats. They have wide, square, and uh, mini. And then there's Polaroid, which is uh, used to be known as the Impossible Project, then Polaroid Originals, and now it's being branded as Polaroid. And so those are the two different kind of instant film, light-sensitive photographic kind of instant print technologies. But there's also other small format digital printer technologies. Most notably, there is a Canon dye sublimation printer that is portable, battery-powered. The prints aren't quite as small as what I was hoping for. And then there is zinc, zero ink technology. This particular printer is made by Polaroid. This is known as a Polaroid Mint pocket printer. The prints themselves are two inches by three inches approximately in size. They're roughly very similar in size to Instax Mini. So Instax is Fuji's uh, instant film product. I happen to have the Instax wide camera. Now this is the uh, Instax 210, so I've had this for a few years. It's kind of a big, clunky-looking point-and-shoot instant camera. Here is a coffee cup picture and a landscape picture. I originally, when I was thinking about this project for taking small instant prints and being able to put them into notebooks and make or cards or whatever, I did initially think about Instax. Uh, either the wide, I think the wide is too big, they also make a square format and then they make the mini which is more of a portrait oriented smaller size picture. The print is a multi-layer sandwich of light sensitive materials and a chemical pod and even after it's been developed it kind of has a certain thickness and stiffness to it and it's not as easy to paste or stick these into notebooks and have them stay laminated. Uh, and there's a certain glossiness, a shininess to the surface that may or may not work good with things like, for instance, a greeting card. And that was the reason why I decided to explore this zero ink or zinc printing technology. There are several different brands and models. There are point and shoot cameras, digital cameras with, of course, the uh, zero ink printer built in. But I didn't want to be stuck with using a little small point and shoot digital camera. I wanted the flexibility of using my smartphone camera that's upgradable or even being able to take a larger digital camera, import the photos to my smartphone or tablet and then using the zinc printer to print out those images from a bigger camera. I thought that would just give me more flexibility. So this is the Polaroid uh, Mint pocket printer. Let's take a look at it. So the uh, Polaroid Mint came with this uh, pack, 50 sheets, which is five 10 print packs of the uh, zinc paper. And the zinc paper is not light sensitive. It's 10 sheets and uh, fa they come face down with a blue calibration card. So they just pop in like this. The blue card is on the bottom. When you first turn it on and print your first image, it will print out the calibration card and that basically tells the printer the kind of paper you're using. The mint printer has a USB cable that charges the internal battery, right? OK, 
cable. There's an internal battery that's not replaceable. And then uh, there is a power button that also has a status light that you want to watch and that'll tell you various things about the uh, printer. And this is the slot where the pictures come out. So this printer works with an app on your smartphone or tablet. I want to pick a photo and I have this particular photo in my camera roll and I'm going to edit this a little bit just to adjust the tones on this particular image. I'm going to hit this little auto adjustment but I'm going to bring the highlights down and I'm going to raise the shadows just a wee bit let's say like that and then I think um, I might put a slight vignette on it just to make the center of the image pop a little bit better like that. Okay, we'll just hit done like that. So you want to make sure that your Bluetooth on your smart device is on and that you've paired the smart device with the uh, Polaroid Mint printer. And so then you will go to your Mint application. It should actually open up already. I'm going to hit my camera roll images here and I'm going to scroll back and this is the picture that we edited earlier and increased the black level and all that. Um, so before I print it, I want to do a little bit more editing. You might notice on the top and bottom here of the image there's some white bars there. I want to hit this edit button in the bottom of this image. Hit the scale button and I'm going to pinch and uh, expand this out a little bit and it gives me a little bit of flexibility also since I'm doing this cropping I can uh, adjust the composition a little bit, something like that. Okay, hit done. And then I'm going to hit the printer button in the middle here. And it's going to ask me how many copies. Just do one copy, hit print, and it will start printing. So you want to pay attention to this white light right here on the power button. It will be blinking when the Mint app is sending the data over uh, Bluetooth to the printer. If it turns red, it means you're out of paper. There it goes. This is one of the criticisms that some reviewers had is it takes a little bit longer to print a picture with the Polaroid Mint technology. However, once it's printed, which takes less than a minute, it's completely done. Whereas with an Instax print, you can take the picture immediately, but it takes maybe up to five minutes to actually get the picture completely done. So it's kind of a trade-off between the immediacy of printing versus uh, how quick the picture develops. Now you might be able to tell here that the uh, two images are not exactly the same color. It looks like my smartphone screen is a little more vibrant in the green and of course my smartphone screen is emitting light where this is a reflective medium here on the print. Uh, you could though however match the color balance between these better. I might want to turn up the color intensity when I do my edit of the image and maybe make it a little bit more greenish or whatever but uh, it's not too bad and for the purposes of making this as a picture for for a note card or whatever, I think it's going to work just fine. So what can you do with these little mint prints? Well, let me just show you in my little sketch journal, for instance. So here is a little typewriter print that I made. Do you notice how the paper sticks to my notebook? So there is a peel-off backing on the zinc paper and it will stick to paper. And, and the nice thing about it, it is very flexible. See, it'll, it adheres to the page. You couldn't really easily do that as easy with a Instax print without bending or creasing the print, right? So this makes it a lot more flexible. And so let's see, I have another one that I just did today. This was a, a little picture of my Voss Model 50. I made some notes about it and you know it makes a really nice way to illustrate a journal book, a little sketchbook. Isn't that cool? So obviously there's a lot of different kinds of journal books out there right now. So this one is a true red journal book and this is a lined journal book but they probably make others that are unlined but you can imagine you could uh, put little prints in here if you're on a little trip or whatever and then you can just uh, write little notes about it right around the picture or you could uh, it'll certainly go this way right also. Uh, here's a Field Notes. Field Notes has all kinds of different notebooks out there. This is the grid particular notebook. Probably not really ideally suited for photographs, but they do make a lot of other kinds of little notebooks that are plain paper. And again, it would work really good as kind of a photo journal, right? A nice little photo journal, small little booklet like that. 
here's another brand of notebook. I don't even know what brand this is actually. And this is nice, uh, plain kind of um, cream colored paper. This would also work really good for photos, right? As a little photo journal book. Uh, you can make your own little notebook. So this is a little notebook project that I call Neat Notebooks. And it's just folded up from one sheet of letter sized paper. It's uh, stapled and it's cut along the edges and it's bound with a thicker piece, a uh, quarter sized piece of paper. I, for this particular version, I laser print the front and back, but just the size of this little neat notebook, you can see how these little prints will fit in here really nicely. And with a little bit heavier paper and a heavier cover, you can see where you can make micro-sized photographic books, like photographic art books, right? Uh, that would be so cool. You can make a limited edition of zines this way with the mint pictures. Another thing you can do is make little note cards and you want to use a nicer grade of paper for this. So I happen to have four different kinds of Southworth uh, letter paper that I got from my local Staples. This is a white paper. This is the uh, cream colored parchment. This is the cream colored linen paper and this is like a gray parchment. So. Uh, of the four kinds of papers, you might want to sample, and there's more papers available, of course, but you might want to just kind of see what color paper your print works best with. I'm almost thinking this gray, it has sort of a faint purplish gray tone to it. It's either that or the white. I think I'm going to try this, um, yeah, this uh, gray parchment here. Now, this was a half letter size sheet of paper, and I'm going to Fold it in half again. Uh, probably the more accurate you are with folding, the better the results will be. I'm using a bone folder. You don't have to use a bone folder. You can just use any old object to crease it with. Just to get a nice little crease. I like to do a corner punch. I think I'm going to use the um, large size corner here. Like that and like that. So for this picture, I was actually thinking it might work this way as a card, right? We can stick the picture on the front in landscape orientation and then we'll have the note right here in landscape orientation also. So, like that, that looks nice. That's probably the one improvement they could make on this is to have a little crease that folds. Okay. Centered horizontally, slightly above the middle, something like that. That's kind of nice, huh? Now, if you're going to use a smartphone anyways in order to connect and control the uh, Mint printer, uh, you have a camera on your smartphone and this raises the possibility of your camera then becomes a source for collecting images. What I discovered is there are certain magazines like in this case, Smithsonian Magazine. Both of these issues have wonderful photos in here, but especially like this one here, it has a whole big spread of uh, the painter Thomas Hart Benton and uh, I find a lot of these pictures here look very interestingly like the kinds of art you might see on a greeting card or whatever, right? So for instance, earlier I had taken a shot of this painting. This is a portrait of Thomas Craven and he's using a stylized black typewriter. And so um, I found it was interesting. Well, there is a typewriter shot. In fact, here is the picture right here. And uh, so, hey, I could print out that. In fact, I did already. I printed out this on the mint and I made a little greeting card for somebody in our local typewriter club. And I think I used cream colored parchment paper that made a really nice looking card. I really do like this picture right here. So I'm going to see if I can photograph this and without getting a whole lot of glare on it. Okay, I'm going to raise the shadows just a wee bit. I'm going to be cropping this picture anyway, but that's pretty much it. So I'm going to turn on the power button to the printer. The white light is lit. I'm going to go to my Bluetooth settings and turn on Bluetooth and now I will select this picture. 
that we just took and edited. I'm going to hit the edit button so that we can crop in a little bit more and get the rest of that out there and crop it the way I want it. That looks pretty good right there, huh? Let's hit done and let's print it. One copy. Alrighty, look at that. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good little quality print for the size of it, and I think it's going to work great as a greeting card illustration or a note card. Fold this guy in half so I know which side is which. I think I'm going to type a note on the inside. Just a real simple thinking of you. Okay, I'm going to try another one here. I really want to do a black and white picture just to see how it renders black and white right here. This is a positive silver gelatin reversal. I'm going to crop this and I'm going to increase the shadow detail. Okay, let's print this. Hit the printer symbol and one copy. And this image is not perfectly black and white. It is tinted. And there it is. That's actually not too bad. Well, with this uh, moody little black and white tree image, I thought uh, it would be uh, good to make a little card out of it with this uh, cream-colored linen paper. So let's see, try to do it horizontally centered, parallel, a little bit above center, vertically, maybe something like that. That will work as a nice little note card for somebody. As far as the cost per print on the zinc paper compared to, let's say, Fuji Instax Mini, which is the closest in size, the best deals I see on Amazon, the zinc paper is about 50 cents a sheet. Instax Mini is about 60-something cents per sheet. So the zinc is a little bit less expensive than the Fuji Instax Mini. I don't want to be dogmatic about my choice of the zinc printer over Instax. Fuji Instax has better color reproduction, more faithful color reproduction than the Zinc printer. But the cameras, the Fuji Instax cameras, are very limited in their ability to close focus and flash photography is very iffy. And so it's the cameras themselves, I think, that really limit how good Fuji Instax looks. I know there's a, a number of homemade projects out there for people that are making their own Instax back for a film camera that gives them more exposure and focus control and all, all that. Well, these are just a few of the things you can do with these little mint portable printers and your smartphone. And I really think there's a lot of potential here. Making these little cards is really super easy. But I really think there is a lot of potential here for things like making special little photographic books, uh, mini zines where you can put these prints into them and uh, make a little limited edition photographic project, a book project that you could give to somebody. Uh, I'm going to have some fun with this and I look forward to it. Well, if you guys have any questions, drop them down below. But as always, this is just another way to stay creative and that's what I encourage you guys to do. Stay creative and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.